Hey, what's up, guys? I hope you are having the best day of your life today. Today, I want to look at a conical pendulum or something that's traveling around in a circle that is not a perfect horizontal motion. So this is going to be a side view. It's kind of like a tether ball or something that's traveling around in this particular way. So this is going to be the side view. And the question here is going to say, what is the force of tension on this string right here that's holding the bar? That's what we're going to want to solve for. And we're also going to want to find the speed of this ball as it travels around in a circle. So the first thing that I'm going to want to do, which I'm always going to want to do, is I'm going to want to look for the forces that are acting on this ball. And the forces that are acting on this ball are weight. Fg that points directly downward. And also the force of tension that points up this way. Okay, so if I bring just the ball over here, and this is going to help in a second, I have the force of tension, Ft, and I have Fg that points down this way. All right, but now we can see that Ft and Fg are not on the same plane, so I know that I'm going to have some components of the tension force. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw something up here that's going to be Ft in the y direction, and then this component over here is going to be Ft in the x direction. Okay, now if this is given as 30, I'm going to call this 60 degrees because I'm just going to have a 30, 60, 90 triangle. All right, and I'm going to solve for these components where Fty, all right, if we look at Fty, if I had a right triangle over here, and I made this an equilateral rectangle, right? If this was 30 and this was 60, I would be able to say that this side here is going to be equal to this side. And this is essentially what I'm calling FTY. Okay, so if you're kind of confused what I'm using is cosines and what I'm using is tangent, I'm going to call this right here FTX. Okay, so when we see FTY, in my drawing, that's going to be the opposite of this 60 degree angle. So opposite is going to be the resultant FT. Opposite is going to be the sine of theta. Okay, that is the object for FT. And also in the Y direction, I also have FG, which is equal to MG. Okay, so these are my two expressions for the Y direction. All right, and that's going to be helpful in just a minute. To solve for Ft now, I know that Fty is equal to Fg. Now, why is that the case? Well, because this ball is not accelerating up or down in the y direction. It's only traveling in a circle. So the only acceleration is a centripetal acceleration this way. So if I say that Ft sine of 60, or the sine of theta, equals mg, I can then say the force of tension okay, is going to be equal to mg sine of theta. That's going to be really, really easy to solve for. If I know the mass is equal to 75 kilograms, and little g is 10 meters per second squared, that's what I'm going to assume on the AP level, and I'm going to divide by the sine of 60, which is rad 3 over 2, I will then say that the force of tension solved by using the y direction is just equal to 866 newtons. Fantastic. Right, so we don't even need the x direction to solve for the force of tension in this particular case. But now if I want to solve for the speed of the chair, I have the same ball. Right, I'm just going to redraw these vectors real quick. This is Fty, and this is Ftx, and this was equal to 60 degrees, okay? Now, we see in the x direction here, the net force, the sum of the forces in the x direction is just equal to Ftx, which I can say is equal, is the component of Ft, that's the resultant, times the cosine, because it's the adjacent to 60, of 60 degrees. 
And the sum of the forces in centripetal motion is called Fc. So I could say that Fc equals Ft cosine of 60 degrees. And we know that Fc is equal to mv squared over r. And that's given on your reference table, which is now going to be equal to Ft cosine of 60. Now let's see if we can start to plug in some of our givens, and we can solve easily for v squared. Well, if I look, I would say that v is going to be equal to the square root, and this is just after some algebra, ft cosine 60 times r divided by m. But I don't know the radius of the circle just yet. But using trigonometry, if I know that the force of tension, or if I know that the side, which was given, is 12 meters, I can't use the tension, guys, because I need a distance. Radius is going to be in a distance. And if I knew that this was 30 degrees, I can now solve for the opposite side, which on this tether ball is going to be the radius. Okay? So the sine of an angle, the sine of 30, is going to equal that opposite side times 12. And that opposite side is the radius. So the radius in this particular case is going to come out to 6 meters. So I sub everything in. I have 866 newtons times the cosine of 60 degrees times 6 meters divided by my m, 75 kilograms, and I find out that the speed that this object is traveling around the circle is 5.89 meters per second. And that's how you solve for the speed and the tension of a conical pendulum or an object that is in horizontal, uniform, circular motion. Hope you guys have a great day today, guys. I will catch you on the next one.